Yay! Okay, I'll figure this out, you guys. I will be a pro in like 80 years. Okay, let me let me show you this clip from Megan real quick. A key problem with this bill is that it proposes to amend something as important as the Canadian Human Rights Act and the Criminal Code in order to include something that isn't even definable. According to Justice Canada, gender identity is defined as a person's internal or individual experience of their gender. But this definition misunderstands what gender is. Gender is not about internal or individual experiences. It's a social construction. It exists as a means to reinforce stereotypes and oppressive ideas about men and women. Gender does not mean male or female, it means masculine or feminine. A century ago, gender determined that women should not be allowed to vote or be counted as persons under the law in Canada. Gender says that men are inherently violent, aggressive, independent, assertive, and rational, whereas women are inherently passive, delicate, nurturing, irrational, and emotional. These ideas have been disproved thanks in large part to the feminist movement, yet today, in creating and supporting the idea that one can have an internal gender identity, we are regressing. No one is born with a gender. We are born male or female, and gender is then imposed on us through socialization. Women do not know they are women because they are born interested in high heels or the color pink. They know they are women because they are female. Treating gender as though it is either internal or a personal choice is dangerous and completely misunderstands how and why women are oppressed under patriarchy as a class of people. Patriarchy was invented in order to control women's reproductive capacity and gender was created in order to naturalize and reinforce that hierarchical system. Women and girls around the world are killed, prostituted, raped, and abused every single day, not because they wear dresses, have long hair, or behave passively, but because they are female. And under patriarchy, females are said to be less than. Things that exist for male use, to be owned, bought, sold, and looked at. Okay. Megan, are you there? I'm here. Yay! Can you see me? Yes, I can see you. Let me actually um, just fix your little, you have a little green, a green note, of, or a green thing above your, well, whatever. I can't fix that now. Okay. Um, hey, thanks so much for taking the time. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. So, um, I really liked, I thought your statement was really interesting. Um, and I know that it's been sort of a source of controversy for you. And also you run a, you run a feminist publication that sort of promotes a type of feminism that centers this definition of womanhood, right? Yeah, so, I mean, we come from a radical feminist perspective, which means that we understand women's oppression to happen on the basis of class. Sex class. Sex class, yes. right, not like money class. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. just a different form of class. What does that mean? So, <laughs> to go back to the beginning, um, <laughs> patriarchy began as a means to control women's reproductive capabilities. So that means that uh, women's oppression exists in direct relation to our sex, um, and you know our biological sex i should say and our bodies right and that's how we're divided up in this hierarchy that we right. call patriarchy that's how men end up at the top of the hierarchy and women end up at the bottom because we're born either male or female and offered power and privilege based on that right so how i mean one of the big controversies about this is that this sort of framework excludes trans people how do you, I mean, do you not think that trans people belong in feminism? I mean, how do you reconcile the need to look at sex and sex oppression with people, women, who don't necessarily have vaginas or who aren't necessarily, maybe or may not be, read as female by the world? Well, so I think there's a lot of different issues there. And, you know, I, I mean... Let's unpack! <laughs> When people ask me that question, I usually end up asking them questions back. So oh, oh so you're gonna interview me? <laughs> all right, all right, I'm ready. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess I mean it's hard to it's hard to speak to it's hard to answer the question. You know, 
do you exclude trans people from feminism or why do you exclude trans people from feminism? Because um, I guess, you know, I feel like it's the wrong question because what what is being excluded from feminism in some ways is males. Um, but so I suppose I, w I would ask you or I would ask whoever is defining this um, as exclusionary, what it is that, what is it that's being excluded, you know? So what are people- A asking? lot of people, I would say, are being but excluded. excluded. Not, like from spaces or from conversations or from the movement, do you know what I mean? Like from womanhood. Right. right, well, I think, you know, a big part of it is the language. That's one of the things that I've noticed is it seems to be particularly difficult for people, but also from spaces and from feminist analysis and feminist activism. Because um, where I agree with you is is with the, the sex-based oppression stuff, but what really trips me up is this idea that therefore we are going to exclude people from this movement for gender equality by their sex, or at least how we read their sex. Um, and sure, some trans women are male, but you know, there is, I generally advocate for, you know, let's keep it simple. We have generally female and generally male, especially when it comes to how you are read in the world, right? Which is how uh, the basis of oppression. But at the end of the day, there are people who sort of exist on a sex spectrum. And I have a hard time, you know, with, with the idea that, well, we should just sort of throw all of those people out of our analysis or out of um, the conversation because they don't they don't well, fit this experience of womanhood that someone else has. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, so I, I would ask if, if it's problematic for you or it's problematic for people who are making these arguments to exclude men from feminism. So to so like you said, we center females, we center women in feminism. Mm -hmm. That's the point of feminism. It's to liberate women in particular from patriarchy. So if, if we want to frame that as excluding men, sure, we can move forward from that. And well, I, so with the, just on that point, I don't think men should be excluded either. Okay. So I, I think there's a place for male allies. I will say, um, I know men who are good allies to feminism, but right. I don't think that men should be included in all feminist activism. I don't think that we should be centering men in feminism. Sure, I but the experience of trans- don't allowed into all women's spaces or into spaces where women are doing political organizing and they want to organize explicitly without men. So, right. like, I mean, maybe you can see a bit how the, the term excluding is a bit, it doesn't quite work for me. Because okay. for me, it's more about the analysis and what we're working towards. I don't think that feminism is is necessarily dependent on excluding. It's more about who we center and who we focus on and what our goals are. Right. Don't you think that there are shared goals in the liberation of females and the liberation of anybody who has a different experience and a marginalized experience because of their sex? There, I'm sure, sure, yeah, there's for sure. Which sure. would include <laughs> trans people, and right? I mean, we're, we're looking at ending violence against women. We're also looking at ending male violence, like all forms of male violence. We're looking at ending gender roles, so that includes masculinity as well as femininity. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, what we would hope is that um, nobody has to live up to these gender expectations. Um, these ideas about men and women aren't imposed on anyone. So mm -hmm. when, when you know, baby boys are born, it's not taught to them that they have to be unemotional or they have to be tough or that they should resolve problems with violence. And it's not, you know, ideas about femininity aren't imposed on girls around, you know, being pretty and being polite and being quiet and later on being sexualized and sexy. So, right. so sure, there, I mean, there are shared goals, but any political movement, every single political movement um, has a particular focus. We can't do everything all at once. So uh, you're kind of saying, if I'm understanding right, like we need to focus on people whose sex is female, even though there are this, this is, there are a, a group of people who are having marginalized experiences of sex and gender who also are kind of fighting for the same thing cuz to me that seems like we're missing on an op we're missing out on an opportunity to unite people under a shared goal 
um, which is to liberate people from sex-based oppression. And I would say that, you know, transphobia is a form of sex-based oppression as well, particularly with people with gender dysphoria. And this is another issue that I have with, you know, excluding, I know you don't like that term, but that's kind of how I think of it, you know, excluding trans folks from feminist spaces is, you know, we are talking about people who are having real experiences, real disconnects and real um, trouble moving through the world because of how they experience their sex. Um, and it's not necessarily just about gender with gender dysphoria, right? It's about how your brain is is understanding your own sex and therefore understanding your gender. Um, and, and, you know, if we, were, if we were defining transgenderism purely based on gender dysphoria that was diagnosable, then yeah, we could, we could sort of move forward from that point, but that's not how we're defining transgenderism anymore. And that's not even how we're defining, I mean, in popular conversations and on social media and in these debates, right? right. We're talking about gender identity. So we're saying anybody who claims to be a woman or anybody who claims to be a man, um, but in this conversation, we're mostly talking about people who claim to be women, um, anybody who, who feels like a woman, anybody who claims womanhood, regardless of anything else, regardless of whether or not they just straight look like a dude, you know, um, that's that's legitimate. So if, right. if I say I'm a man, that's that's the truth. I'm a man and everyone has to accept that and they have to treat me as though I'm a male. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not, there's no, there's no solid definition. And so again, it makes it really hard to have these conversations. What are we even talking about? Right. Well, I, I think with the self-definition stuff, I think you're right. Like we do need a little, a little more to our analysis than just like I say, I think, therefore I am, sort of thing. But we also need to make sure that that respects people's identities and their experiences. Um, and you know, I understand the concern that really there, under this framework, right, of the gender is identity stuff you know, you are what you say you are. And I think that can be emp empowering in its own way, right? Like people are allowed to just sort of say, fuck the binary, fuck whatever all this bullshit is. I don't like it, it's alienating, it's oppressive. So I'm gonna just do whatever I want. And that's where I think the self-identification stuff is valid, but I understand in terms of legal stuff or, I don't know, there might be s some situations where we need a little bit more. Um, and I don't know, I don't know what that is. I, I think that in general, I lean toward, well, we just trust people, but I understand that that's not okay. acceptable for everyone. Men? Like if a man is like, I'm a woman, let me into your space. Like, let me. Does that happen often though? Meeting. Let me into your locker room. Like, yeah. let me into women's prisons, whatever. We just have to trust him. Like, I don't know if men have earned the right to be trusted. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Like, well, but but not all of them are men, right? If they weren't right? raping women and, and beating women up and, and killing women, then, then but, yeah, but the, maybe we can okay. trust them a little bit more. Okay, well, I, I can see the sort of, like, picture this scenario where there is, like, this violent man, actual man, right? A cis man who is trying to pretend to be a woman, too. And yeah, like, I don't, I don't, I don't have answers for how to address that, but my experience and feeling is that most of the people who are trying to be involved in feminist spaces are not men. You know, they're women, and they're having this experience of the world um, that's not necessarily exactly the same. I think that, you know, trans women do have different experiences that I can't understand, and maybe, you know, unless they were coded as female as well, like me coming up in the world and having a female body, I have experiences that people who were gendered by the world as men, even though it wasn't accurate, they can't understand those experiences. So I think there is some nuance there. Um, but at, at the end of the day, you know, I, I wonder, my question about radical feminism, even though I agree with the analysis, a lot of it, not all of it, is, you know, is it really, is this really feminism? Is this really feminist to say, oh, you know, you have this different experience of gender, you have this different experience of sex, and it doesn't necessarily like fit into our political goals, therefore I'm going to misgender you, I'm going to exclude you from these spaces, I'm going to, you know, tell you you are a man whether you like it or not. Like, what does that really accomplish? Well, <laughs> so I mean a couple things, like that term misgendering, again, like what does that mean? Like we're all, every single person in the world is misgendered. I was misgendered. I don't want, I didn't ask femininity to be imposed on me, right? Okay. I don't think that that's something. But it's not just I mean, femininity either, right? 
Like, let's just use the dis- let's just use the dysphoria and, 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 definition. I just want to say about gender. I mean, gender. I, we're talking about like in this conversation about gender identity and transgenderism. We're talking about gender as though it's this personal, individual experience you're feeling, and then therefore we have to respect everyone's personal identity and their personal feelings and their personal experience about gender and what's inside. But that's not what gender is. Gender is the system. Gender is the system that's imposed on us again to reinforce this hierarchy, and it's a really harmful system. And I agree with you. A violent system. <laughs> I agree with you that it's a harmful, yeah. violent system. I'm just saying, oh well, you know, trans people are being swept up in that harmful, violent system too. And sure, you know, sure, maybe yeah. maybe the gender stuff, like the way we are gendered by the world, is based on our sex. And maybe, you know, you could argue that, well, our pronouns should be based on our our perceived sex and and nothing else. But at the end of the day, like, for me, feminism is a retreat from the world. And for, for trans folks, you know, we need to create, my feeling is that we need to create spaces where people do feel respected and can know that their, you know, experience of the world will be validated in this space. Because whatever your experience is, it's okay. There's no right or wrong way to make sense of this stuff so within feminism specifically you know the the political goal of sort of you know enforcing this very rigid definition of gender just strikes me as a little bit narrowly focused and also you know it's alienating and marginalizing of people and may actually in some way contribute to more sex-based violence Against think, trans but folks. I think it's not, I don't think feminism is to blame for people's experiences of marginalization under patriarchy. So yes, men men suffer under patriarchy in various ways, especially if they're gender non-conforming, let's mm-hmm. say. You mm-hmm. know, gay men suffer under patriarchy. Um, men who are... I think all men mm-hmm. suffer, most men suffer, uh, most, in one way or another, you know? But yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's true, they do suffer in particular ways because masculinity sucks, but they're not the target of patriarchy, they're not, it's not, patriarchy doesn't intend to subordinate and oppress men. But in any case, you know, so, I mean, including every, that just means feminism is supposed to include every person in the world. And um, everything in the world, and every people in the world. Why not? Every, because <laughs> that's ridiculous. No, it's not. Feminism is the one movement that is about women. It's the one thing that's just about women. There's all sorts of other political movements that are really important. And that but trans women, like, with, this like, is about like, gender. Capitalism, like anti-racism. But in, in, you know, we don't ask socialists to center everybody in the entire world when they're, yeah. they're, when they're working towards an anti-capitalism. And we don't ask people who are um, fighting racism like people of color who are working against racism to center white people and white people's feelings of marginalization and white people's right. experiences under white supremacy in their movement. So I think it's okay in feminism for us to focus explicitly on the experience of women and the way that women are oppressed because of their bodies and biological sex. Right. So feminism is about, gen- for me, feminism is about gender equality. That's really like the bottom line for me. So. You know, I understand the point that you're making, where there's there's sex, because I too agree that some of the more very far left liberal feminist politics completely ignore what you're saying. Like, do not take that into account at all, and will not even use sex terms. This is something I've been kind of flame warring about in the drunken late hours of the evening with people on Twitter. Like, I think we need to pay attention to sex, right? Yeah, but at the same it, time, it has so many implications for for health. It does. It does for and for sex ed. And like try and, teaching and for, like all sorts of other things. Yeah, try right. teaching a sex ed class where literally every word to describe everything is wrong. Like there's no words anymore. There's no definitions anymore. And I'm just like, ah, what do I do? So that's my frustration. But for me, feminism at the end of the day is about gender equality. And that means anybody who is sort of a refugee of gender, who is a gender outlaw, you know. We, we got to stick together, you know, we got to stick together and maybe, like I said in, in the video that I made about this a few days ago, you know, maybe the solution is we can have both and we need to acknowledge that sometimes the space is going to be more about people's physical sex or how they're read in the world and I don't know, I don't know what the solution is, but I, I want to be gung-ho, like, let's, 
look at like the root of these causes. You know, I think your analysis on, I disagree with you on the sex stuff too, but I think your analysis in terms of gender inequality stuff is pretty spot on, but it's just missing this element of seeing how this stuff affects other people that are not cis women, right? And seeing how it affects sort of the spectrum of, of gendered experiences. I don't think we have to worry about how feminism affects men. <laughs> But but they're not men, right? They're they're not they're not necessarily men. Feeling left out of feminism because men haven't spent very much time worrying about how women feel. And in male-led movements, in male-centered movements, they have they have totally ignored women's interests and women's need, and that's why feminism exists. I mean, feminism grew out of a need to you know separate off from from male-led leftist movements because we were supporting their goals and supporting their goals and supporting their goals. And then when it came to us, they were like, nah, like, whatever. Like, right. so feminism, feminism really does need to focus on women. And I don't but, think but they it's are women. To, to focus on everyone who has a negative experience in a patriarchal world. I, I, I hear you. I agree with you on that. I'm just, the point where we disagree is that they're not women. I am saying they, they are women, you know, in, well, in, in the women. sense that they are, in the sense they are experiencing <laughs> don't even <laughs> do not troll me Megan what the fuck is a woman yeah I know I know I just think you know woman is a lot of things you know woman can be many things and but it has to be female it doesn't it, it, it isn't I did <laughs> no it, it, I mean it, it doesn't it's about sex right it is about sex but but I think that like the experiences that people have of their sex can take many forms so that's kind of where I land with it I don't expect for us to fully agree on that even though you know I think that the sex-based analysis stuff is good which is what I wanted to talk to you about was so there's been this something that I've noticed in the last who's at my house <laughs> um, something that I've noticed within the last I don't know, uh, 10 years or so maybe is a gradual move toward um, removing sex from, from feminism. Um, and I understand why this is happening to some degree. I see um, people don't want to be defined in terms of their sex. I certainly don't. Um, and I'm sure you don't either. You know, that's not very fun. And there, there are some issues with how people relate their sex to their gender. And so female and male in these, these words, I can see where they can become a little bit dicey for people. Um, but like I said, for me, it's make it, made it really hard to talk about. What do you, that's my sort of main contention with this stuff. Um, <laughs> I think gotta let them in. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like scared. No one ever comes to my house. Um, I wanna talk to you about your critique of third wave feminism. Can you give me just one second though? Let me make sure it's not an emergency, like someone fucking died outside my house once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's just marketing people. Go away. <laughs> we can just ignore them. All right, so what's your, um, you know, radical feminism is seen as a much more second wave feminist movement, not just because of the gender stuff, but also radical feminism. A lot of people see it as very sex negative. Um, which is a topic for a different day. What's your sort of general um, take on where the feminist movement has moved? So, radical feminism, which, I mean, you discussed this in your last video, so you were aware of this, um, but for those who may not know, um, radical, fe like, the word radical, in terms of radical feminism, let's begin, um, means to get at the root. So, what radical feminism does is to analyze the roots of women's oppression. And yeah, that was sort of, I, I mean, these ideas, these feminist ideas that were prominent in the 70s didn't really, I mean, they were happening during the first wave also. People just tend to see the first wave as like a liberally movement and they totally kind of brush it off, I find, which is really frustrating because at the time, you know, getting the vote was like a crazy idea. <laughs> like people mm -hmm. thought that, like anybody who said women should have the vote, they were like, you're insane. Mm -hmm. Like that was a super radical idea. But in any case, um, the second wave, radical feminism during the second wave focused a lot on things like pornography and objectification, violence <laughs> against women. Um, and 
that's still the focus of, of radical feminism. That's still the focus of our movement, ending violence against women, mm-hmm. addressing objectification, prostitution, pornography, and now of course there's this gender issue that we're forced to contend with because it's been it's become so like warped the idea of what is sex and what is gender and how does patriarchy work and who should be in feminism and who mm-hmm. should be centered in feminism. Um, and what the third wave did was to come at feminism from a really individualist perspective. Mm -hmm. It was very much centered around personal experiences and personal empowerment. Mm -hmm. So we started having this conversation that was like, well, anything that makes me feel good, anything that makes me feel empowered, whether that's stilettos or, you know, makeup or um, self-objectification, or pornography, that's good because it makes me feel good and that's the end of the analysis. And you can't say, you know, no, that's not actually empowerment because it's how I feel. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's a lot of other problems with third wave feminism, but I think that most of it is rooted in that kind of individualist analysis. I really think that the third wave failed to, you know, have any critique of capitalism mm. and if they kind of branded themselves and sold themselves in this really sexualized way and like, we're the fun, sexy feminists. <laughs> it's like, you know, that's going to be really popular. Hey, what's wrong with being fun and sexy? sexy. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's room for both, right? Um, I, I see some of this individualism stuff as well. You know, when we when there oh, these debates over what's feminist and what's not often comes down to well, I like it, therefore it is, right? Yeah. Um, and I do think that that is sort of a short-sighted analysis. Um, but at the same time, I also feel like isn't that kind of part of freeing people up to to just be who they want to feel like they don't have to comply to be you know for me you know i grew up mormon part of the third wave's message that you can you know have your own sexual identity and and be an empowered woman and it doesn't say anything about you or your worth is a very powerful and impactful message sure Um, and you know and i i want all women to feel empowered i want them to feel good about themselves I am not going to tell a woman not to wear makeup or not to wear heels or not to whatever. Like, that's not the goal of feminism isn't to go around to individuals saying, stop doing that thing. It's, it's like, it's more that, you know, it's a matter of framing these things as feminists because feminism is about collective liberation. It's not about how individuals feel. Right. And I think that this is like a pretty, I'm Canadian, so. And I came from a super atheist background. Like, I didn't even know anybody religious until one day I was an adult. Oh, my God. That's crazy. (laughs) My parents are leftists. My dad's a Marxist. Oh, my God. It's all coming into it's all coming into view now. <laughs> Everything makes sense. <laughs> it's, been, it's interesting because you know a lot of the the conversation around feminism is dominated by Americans, which makes sense because there's a lot more Americans in there. Yeah. There are too many of us. <laughs> too many. <laughs> many. <laughs> okay. uh, but, uh, you know, I, it's interesting because it, I've learned that a lot of liberal feminists and a lot of these third wave feminists who are very much like. No, like I'm, I'm into BDSM. I'm into sex. I'm into porn. Anything goes. Anything that happens in my bedroom is my business. And it is. Do you disagree with that? It came from an, a religious background, <laughs> and it's sort of like this ongoing rebellion of these teenagers who were, were not like where they were just taught like sex is bad and your vagina is bad and like your body is bad. And yeah. so once you guys found third wave feminism, you're like, whoa, like I'm gonna just, I'm gonna be naked all the time and like. <laughs> What's wrong with being naked all the time? You're naming all my favorite things, BDSM, porn, being naked. <laughs> and that's, I think that's why feminism ends up being framed as sex negative. And it's not about like Fair being enough. anti-sex, it's about having like an analysis of sex and how sex and sexuality functions under patriarchy, which is like, not very good, <laughs> like, and actually really harmful. For a lot okay, of in terms of the violence stuff. Yeah, right. and in terms of 
coercion and just yes. centering dicks and sex, like centering penetration. Right, sex right. Really sex is penis well and vagina. For a lot of heterosexual women, mm-hmm. um, erasing lesbianism or fetishizing lesbianism. Like, erasing the clitoris. I didn't even know about that till I was <laughs> 19. Literally, like out of the textbooks. Like that does not exist, which is crazy to me. Yeah, and you probably, you did, I know you can actually see that, the Teen Vogue article about anal sex that also erased the clitoris. Yeah, what the hell was that? That That's yeah. the kind of stuff that makes me yeah. nervous. Like, I'm in the sex positive movement, and I'm like, oh god, what's happening, what's happening, the train is going off the rails, and I can't stop it! Yeah, it's just really yeah, stressful. Yeah. Um, well, that's interesting. I, th- I think the individualism stuff, the choice stuff, you know, I, I, I think there is there's merit to that critique, even though I do ultimately think that the solution is not to, like, tell people what to do or to make them feel bad about their, you know, sexual preferences or what they like in the bedroom. That's not going to do anything. And it doesn't, you know, the revolution doesn't happen between the sheets necessarily. Like, there's more, there's more to it than just that. So... I don't know. My last sort of uh, topic I want to talk to you about here before we go to questions is the ter- kind of looping back again, the turf stuff. And specifically, not just the, the, the sort of ideas that lend itself to turfism, but some of the behavior that happens online. I've seen some, and I'm not holding you like accountable for all of this. I'm just curious about your take because some of it gets really nasty um, and just seems cruel for no reason, you know, just unnecessarily cruel toward trans people online and um, a little bit combative. Now, I know that this train goes both ways. Um, I don't know that it goes with the same force. I have no idea what's worse, right? But, um, you know, I see some stuff that, like, bullying teenagers who are trans and it's just like what is this this is not okay you know like, what's up with that i never witnessed a radical feminist bullying a teen but i mean i i've, I've seen some of it online. online you what and there's all sorts of crap that happens online so. that that's and true but there's a lot of anonymous twitter accounts and people are free to act like assholes in various ways. Of course. I will say, being on the end of <laughs> the, the whole turf thing, um, I get like crazy abuse and like crazy death threats and have been like blacklisted. Like there was a petition started to have me fired from my job, like people liable left and right. Like I've been accused of pretty much everything just to get me to like shut up. Right. Um, and and all the women that I know who've spoken out, and that's just from asking these questions, like kind of similar right. to the questions that you're asking. Like, yeah. like what, what is a woman? What does that mean? Like yeah. this is what feminism is. Sex is real. And you I'm know, really disturbed to hear of, that. I don't. I don't think it does go equally both ways. Like no. I don't see feminists bothering with what trans people are doing. Like I, there's a huge radical feminist community here in Vancouver. So I'm allied with, and I work directly with, like in person, not just online, real women who work at transition houses and mm-hmm. who are helping victims of male violence mm-hmm. um, from all different backgrounds. And you know, they aren't paying attention to what trans people are doing. They're not trying to shut down trans activism. They're not trying to shut down um, trans spaces or trans meetings. They're focused on their work. They're focused on women. And, you know, meanwhile, trans activists are constantly trying to shut us down. You know, like the Vancouver Women's Library opened here in Vancouver uh, in February and was attacked and vandalized and protested by trans activists Why? because it was the library for women. And they said, that, you know, they didn't exclude trans people from the library. Right. Anybody can actually go in the library and only women can have memberships, but it's self-identified women. Oh, so what's the so, problem? <laughs> just affiliation with radical feminism. Oh God, people need to stop being crazy. What no, the it's fuck? Scary. Like it's scary when right. people are are and it's scary when people hate you so much for trying to do feminist work and trying to have conversations. And of course it's scary when people 
send me emails that tell me I should die and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, the women, so I'll say, I, I'm going on and on, but the women I work with, they're not going around harassing trans people. Okay. Well, that's fair. The internet is the wild west. But, you know, I see this stuff and I worry about it. And I just wonder, you know, can't we be radical feminists and also be inclusive and not bully people and not, you know, just just respect how people want to be addressed. Like, it's not that hard. It doesn't necessarily, I don't think, like, the patriarchy is going to be taken down by calling trans women he. You know, it, it's just, that's not, it's not, like, a good use of time. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I mean, I don't think that it's necessary that, I don't think that it's okay to demand women pretend that men are women. <laughs> so I don't think it's okay for a man to say, that I'm males are start women. calling me she, invite me to your meeting, let me into your locker room, let me into your spaces, let me into your transition houses. I mean, it's bigger than just this pronoun thing. Mm -hmm. Like, it's one thing to say, be polite, but being polite in this context to me has a lot of other repercussions. And I see it sort of as a form of bullying in and of itself like if, if you don't use my pronoun you're a turf and you're transphobic and i'm gonna get you fired from your job like i'm not going around trying to get people fired from their jobs no one i know is going around trying to get people fired from their jobs but well, when yeah. you talk about this stuff their jobs are threatened people i know <laughs> i'm about this stuff their jobs are threatened yeah i, mean, I, I know. know i am on the receiving end of it and have yeah. been for years um and you know, I will say that radical feminists have never targeted me and have always been really supportive, uh, except when I do a lot of trans rights stuff, they tend to not be happy about that. But at the same time, I am a cisgender woman. Like, I have a vagina. You know, I very clearly read as a woman, um, as a female, and so, of course, I'm not really the target of it. I have been targeted by some of this more aggressive liberal feminism and that's also been an issue for me you know it's like whoa like who who are your we're in the same fight <laughs> like i'm literally like on the fucking front lines i'm at the fucking white house advocating for trans rights and trans laws like how i don't know it, it's a little over the top on the internet like the people who are targeted like you know when you're actually doing like real legit work and people are are targeting you and shutting you down because you're asking these questions and trying it is to have it is about asking the questions it's so misguided. i think so too you know it's it's frustrating because the other thing is you know it's very people were very mad at me for inviting you to to talk um very mad at me for inviting I'm everyone was mad about, about a different person you know how the fuck are you gonna invite this person they're evil they're making the world a, ba a bad place you know it's like yeah, how are we yeah. ever going to re resolve some of this stuff i feel like the tensions have gotten too high like there's got to be sh some shared understanding here and there's got to be room for people to talk about their experiences there's got to be room for for definitions of words and it's not okay if people are are vandalizing libraries it doesn't matter if you're trans or a woman or a man or anything that is wrong across the board yeah. right and threatening violence violence is wrong across the board um and that's another this is a topic for a different day but another thing i've seen is like lesbian friends of mine being being threatened because they have said that they you know only like pussy like yeah. that's something we're threatening for people for now and i'm just like what is happening like can't everybody just have sex with who they want and like don't tell other people i don't know it's a mess yeah, I mean, it's a mess lesbians and, and lesbians are oppressed and marginalized marginalized <sighs> already and i know lies and their reality is erased already and then to pile this on top of it like you're right. probably like a bigot because you won't have sex with somebody who has a penis like mm -hmm. not okay right i don't i it, it's just in every direction you know to me even the radical feminism stuff like it does feel like people are just turning on each other when we have shared goals so that's kind of you know where i land with it but i really appreciate you know the perspective that you bring and obviously you're like a strong outspoken woman and that is to me, you know, very, very feminist in and of itself, even though I, I think there's some, like, mi slightly misguided elements of radical feminism. My hope is that in the future, um, as the feminist conversation continues, there may be, maybe I'm too much of an optimist, but maybe there will be a little bit more common ground and shared organizing between both groups. Do you think that's ever going to happen? I'm way more cynical than that. <laughs> 
feel well. Like, I feel like we tried. Like, I feel like women, feminists have tried for the last 150 years to work with men, and it just hasn't worked. And so, as far as I'm Tra- concerned, but we're talking about like trans we're, folks. You do your thing, we're going to do our thing. Like, <sighs> right. allying, allying with, like I said, allying with male led movements has not worked for feminism. Our interests have been erased. We've been treated um, badly by men who behave like sexists, who behave like misogynists, who behave mm. violently mm-hmm. despite their supposed progressive ideas and goals. Right. And like I said, you know, like I'm not, I'm not opposed to um, male allies. The idea of male allies. There's lots of good ones out there for sure. Yeah. Um, there's lots of men who really do have a strong understanding of feminism and what feminism is. Mm-hmm. But, you know, those are also not the men who are barging into our spaces and demanding to be included at every meeting and every event. And um, they respect our boundaries. What if there were spaces for people who feel like their gender is more about their sex and people who feel like their gender is more about you know, their experience of the world. Like, maybe maybe we need both. You know, maybe there should be space for that. Um, for people who... Because I don't think... I also think it's problematic to tell women, like, you need to be comfortable with it, whatever. I, I don't like the implication that anybody needs to be comfortable with anything sexually. Like, when it comes to their bodies, you don't need to be anything, right? Um, so I wonder if maybe the solution is to try to expand the number of spaces that are available to everyone. So that everyone can just simmer on down. <laughs> I, think, I mean, I think there should be spaces where everyone is uh, welcome in those spaces. I think that trans identified people should have their own spaces and organize amongst themselves if that's what they want, just like any marginalized group would. But um, intersectionality. But I don't think that everyone has to be welcome in all spaces. Okay, well, that's where we'll disagree. Okay. So let me um, grab a, a few, are you up to answer a few questions? Yeah. You cool with that? Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me let me grab a few questions here. I'm going to go to the super chat. Let's see if there's... Uh, Christian asking if we'll archive this. Yes. All right. Um, Jaded has a comment here. The patriarchy oppresses everyone. It's called living. Life is pain. Get used to <laughs> Everything it. Everything is bad. <laughs> <laughs> um... Do you think the patriarchy oppresses everyone to some degree? No. no. The patriarchy specifically oppresses women. I think I understand what people mean when they say that everyone suffers under patriarchy, because I do agree that there are ways that men suffer under patriarchy. I right. think patriarchy is bad for everyone, but I think that's different than saying that it oppresses everyone. Right. Because men hold okay. a significant amount of power under patriarchy, and that's, you know, part of that system. So what about, you know... Women are certainly targeted and, and suffer more in very specific ways under okay. patriarchy. So it doesn't make sense to me to say, oh, well, everybody. Like, yeah, everybody, everybody has shit that's Mm -hmm. going on in their lives. And there's different forms of oppression. There's class oppression, you know, in terms of like working class people. Right. There's race oppression, do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, there's various ways that people suffer and are marginalized and oppressed. But when we're talking about patriarchy specifically, it's specifically and intentionally about oppressing women. Being female, okay. What about like, um, what about some of the ways, I would say that, you know, the way that we teach masculinity or the way that we understand and conceptualize masculinity sometimes makes it so that men have to feel like they have to push down their human experiences, their feelings, you know, we kind of enforce this really terrible um, expectation of men to never really feel. And I've seen it affect the men in my life who are really struggling, like maybe have mental health issues and, you know, are are having relationship issues, but they feel like they just got to sort of man up and deal with it. You know, what about that? Like, isn't that a type of oppression and sort of all the things that come out of that where men, you know, if there is sort of emotional abuse or something in the relationship, they're told that they need to deal with it. Or, you know, men are much more likely to commit suicide. And I think that's partially because they are told just to deal with it. Like, it's it's feminine and weak and stupid to get help, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, isn't that a type of oppression? I don't think it's a type of oppression. I think that it's a, a kind of suffering. I think that it's a really horrible 
um, impact of patriarchy. I was going to say side effect, but I don't think that it's just a side effect because I agree that masculinity is really harmful. And I agree. Well, not all masculinity, but like some aspects of it. Yeah. Because I mean, male violence doesn't only impact women. Male violence also impacts men. Yes. And men are violent towards each other a lot. Right, right. And it's true that men aren't socialized and they don't learn how to communicate about their emotions. And, they, and they're taught to sort of accept abuse too. Like I, I know several men who have been in abusive relationships and they don't see it as abuse. They, they legitimately do not understand you know, your partner doing this kind of stuff, <laughs> manipulating and controlling you and, and ruining your life is abusive because abuse is a, a women's thing, right? Like, only women can be abused. This idea well, that... Sure. I mean, women can be abusive, but I don't think that... Um, I don't think that it's systemic in the same way, and I don't think that... I mean, there's a difference of power there, too, right? Mm-hmm. Like, a woman behaving in an abusive way doesn't have the same impact as a man behaving in an abusive way because there's already a power differential there. That man is already mm-hmm. in a position of power as a man, and she's already in a position of uh, subordination. And so it's not that I think abusive behavior is okay when women do it. It's not okay when anybody does it. Yeah. But, you know, the, the issue of when we're talking about male violence against women and domestic abuse... I think that we can both agree that women suffer in inordinate ways and that um, it's usually men who are targeting women. And usually men are bigger and stronger than women. Often men make money than women, and so they feel like women they, they can't leave a relationship because they, they won't be able to afford their rent hmm. or their bills or their food. Um, Often when women leave abusive relationships, they're stalked and, and sometimes murdered by the men that they've left. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I'm not saying that they're, the dynamics are exactly the same. I'm just saying that I think the same sort of root of the problem does affect men in ways that feminists should be talking about more. Um, well, well, we can disagree on that. Do you mind if I take a few more questions? Not, I don't think, yeah, sure. I mean, I, I will say, I don't think bad behavior is okay from anyone, but yeah, um, of course. I think that there's something specific about men's behavior towards women and men's violence towards women that is something that feminists should be focusing specifically on. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> um, Yankees Cap says, there is only one gender, and that is the human gender. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. <laughs> it, that would be that would be nice. I feel like that's kind of what the, the idea is. Like we need to work toward a world where none of this stuff, you know, has any bearing on people's lives. Sure. I mean, you could frame it in that way. I would say that we we need to just get rid of gender, the idea of gender as we understand it under patriarchy entirely. Like, because I mean, what's gender? It, it's sort of it's applying like personality traits to different people. Right? It's just we're just talking yeah, about just personality, saying somewhat. you're uh, you're really polite or you're um, aggressive or something like that. Right. Like those are kind of personality traits. It's just that we've divided those personality traits up based on sex. Right. Okay. Well, yeah, the, the gender so role everybody stuff. Everybody should be able to have the personality that they want to have. Right. <laughs> um. I agree with that. <laughs> uh, Sean says, Megan said that men haven't helped women at all. Does she honestly believe that there's been no progress in women's rights in the last 150 years? I didn't say men haven't helped women at all. I mean, men, there have been men who have helped women and who have allied with us. And there have been men. There were men who helped women get the vote. Right. Right. Just not very many of them. Hashtag not all men. There's, there's men, there's totally men who have worked towards, you know, like I support the Nordic model. I, I work towards the, the end of prostitution. Right. And there's totally men who are on board and who have played a really significant role in getting the Nordic model passed uh-huh. and in criminalizing men who buy sex. Okay. So, no, I, I wouldn't say men haven't done anything. That's not true. All right. I, I think what I was talking about is men's behavior and leftist movements in particular fair enough okay. and there's men in leftist movements who are who are good also there are individual men but as a whole women have not had a really great experience working with male and leftist movements 
Hope that's a satisfactory response, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> um, White Mage says, um, if you're so concerned about definitions and communication, why won't you define man and woman? I think that's directed I've at me. I've defined it like 800 times. Yeah, I think, I think that's more... every single day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, adult human female, adult human <laughs> male. Right. And I, yeah. I have a harder time defining man and woman because I think it's a lot of things. And so the, for me, it's the context that matters. It's the context of what we're doing, what our, what our goal is, um, that sort of thing. So, uh, fa, or Spinoza <laughs> asks, um, what objective conditions would confirm the end of the patriarchy? Um, because if you say the end of gender and such, that seems like a deliberately unreachable goal. Hmm, that's an interesting question. I think it's reachable. I mean, we get rid of gender roles. We stop talking about, like, we stop socializing men and women in these really specific sexist ways. Right. Okay. Um, no more gender roles. That's, you know, I think that seems like a pretty solid first step. I wonder if they're, like, the gender roles, the stuff that's related to your sex, you know, I think that some gender roles come from our bodies, like the idea that women are more nurturing. I think that's because females give birth and stuff. So I wonder if there were, we can ever truly, we can escape the roles that are oppressive maybe. Um, but I feel like people will always make generalizations about people because of their sex. Do you think there's, there's any way for the human brain to not make generalizations like that? I, to I think generalizations are very much about what our culture and society teaches us. So I think if we started teaching something different, we would have different ideas. I mean, well, sure, yeah, sure. But to some like, extent, like I, I feel like our brains just work in categories, and that that's part of why a lot of people have so many issues with trans folks. Is like my brain has to have more categories now. You know, like it's just sort of how our brains default. We make assumptions. We have biases based on what we see, and I don't know. I I I, I believe that's all socialized. I don't think that that's uh, a part of our brain where we we insist on one hundred percent people and certain groups of people in a certain way. I mean, because you could use that argument to defend racism. Our brains. Well, I think that's part of why people are racist. About people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that's a good thing. I think the idea is to, to realize that we see people in categories and the assumptions and biases we have about those categories. And then, you know, to recognize it when our brains do that. Like, the solution is not to say, oh, we're never going to see sex, we're never going to see race. It's that, oh, what I what do I assume based on that? And being aware of it can kind yeah, of... Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I agree that, like, those ideas will pop into people's heads. Yeah. And it's about being like, nope, like that's a racist idea or right. like nope that's a sexist idea right but i don't think that we're born that way i think that these ideas come from what we see in the media i think it comes from what we learn from our parents and from our friends um so yeah i wouldn't say and i mean these ideas about yeah sure these ideas about women being naturally nurturing may well be connected to the fact that we give birth mm -hmm. but I don't know. I mean, I'm really not very nurturing at all. So. <laughs> well, it's a generalization, right? It's a generalization. I'm like the non-nurturing one in my relationships. I mean, and so if we're going to go around saying everyone's different and everyone has different experiences and different personalities right. and we're all individuals, then we're going to have to sort of shut down those ideas. Right. Okay. That's, that's fair. Um, I got to follow up on the patriarchy question. I think this is interesting. Darth, um, Darth says patriarchy was cr was not created. It happened because of an evolutionary mechanism, and gender is too. It didn't come from patriarchy specifically. Patriarchy happened because men realized that um, they needed to control their offspring. They needed to determine whose was the, who, which kids were theirs. So you think it was like a deliberate that their thing? Their sperm played a role in the making babies. So right. They needed to control women in order to control their bloodline. That's why patriarchy exists. Okay. So I, I agree, I think there are some examples of that, like especially within religions, you know, the, the Abrahamic religions are not very patriarchal in my opinion, but isn't there also, like this comes back to the nurturing thing, isn't there also some sort of, you know, division that happens based on sex, it's not just or fair, but this division has sort of arisen from our, our biological situations? 
Well, there can be biological, I mean, I think we should acknowledge biological differences. Like, in general, men are bigger and stronger than women. Yeah. I don't think that that's a sexist thing to say. I, I don't think so either. I mean, in general. general. I mean, it's not the case for all women and all men. Yeah, I mean, I could kick many men's asses, so it's clearly not entirely true across the board. Yeah, totally. There's amazing <laughs> female athletes who can kick men's asses. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, these are generalizations, but on the whole, males are larger. But I think that I, what I, what the problem is is attaching these biological differences, like offering offering power to men because they have different bodies than women. Right. You know, like there's yeah, there's and, and not all cult, not all cultures across the world have been patriarchal. Right. There's that too. It's not true that patriarchy has just existed everywhere forever. There are cultures where patriarchy never existed until colonialism. You know, like it doesn't, that proves that it doesn't have to exist, that there can be something different. That's, yeah. And that's the point that I often make about the, the sexist sort of assumptions about people based on their sex is look, this doesn't happen everywhere. Like it happens a lot, but there are places where it doesn't. questions um what traits do you consider masculine and are any of them positive ditto to feminine traits um demi's i'm actually going to be doing a video on that fairly soon so sit tight for my uh opinion on that but megan do you think there are any positive masculine traits i mean there's all sorts of traits that could be positive which it ones? On how we see them. I mean, a masculine trait is being rational. There's nothing yeah. wrong with being rational. It's That's just true. That women are also rational, and men are also irrational. Right. Right. <laughs> I'm not being nurturing isn't a bad thing. It's right. only a bad thing if we say only women are nurturing. They're right. Specifically nurturing, and we have to treat them differently because they're nurturing. And enforce it. Yeah, totally. That's that's a good point. Um, Kai says, "I feel like the radical liberal feminist trans fight is the priority be- between." Security of female uh, born females and the freedom of individual trans expression. What should feminism be? I mean, like, I guess that sort of gets at some of. Does that get at what some of what we were saying earlier? I'm a little bit confused about the question, but um... I think that they're saying you know some of this tension is the fact that people want fe- uh, female born spaces and places to talk about what that means like I was born and coded as a female in the world and that's how I was brought up versus this is who I am and this is how I see myself my individual self-expression regardless of your sex right and spaces which accommodate both um and you know Kai your question about what should feminism be is you know we can't I don't think we can individual expression is great like do what you want but that can't define our political movements how people feel like that's not that's just not that important to me to be honest um but i mean yeah so it's about protecting women's spaces but then there's also that debate again like it's so frustrating that like people have a real serious misunderstanding around what gender is and sex is and they mix up the two and you talked about that yeah. before yeah and so part of the conflict for feminists is saying like no gender isn't sex gender yeah. isn't liberating gender isn't a personal choice gender is not a good it's thing imposed on you yeah yeah that's a pretty good summation of the patriarchy stuff um okay we'll take a few more questions we got one more here on super chat and then i'm gonna go to the uh hashtag green pill Oh, Darth is just making a follow-up comment. Um, they were the one that said that patriarchy happened because of evolution. Gender roles existed even where patriarchy didn't. Um, which yeah, but they weren't gender roles that offered power. They right. weren't gender roles that created a hierarchy necessarily. It, that he's right, actually. There are cultures that weren't patriarchal cultures that still had gender roles, mm. but those gender roles didn't subordinate. Right, it's the power. They didn't specifically subordinate women and specifically 
put men in a position of, of dominance. Right. Okay. That's pretty that's a good answer. Um, okay. We got a laser asks if humans are inherently social species, then are social constructs also not inherently natural? My brain just died. <laughs> <laughs> My brain's like, <laughs> Um, I'm not sure I understand what you're saying here. (laughs) Buffering. Give me a second here. Yeah, I don't get it. Oh, I think they're saying, you know, we're a social species, so aren't social constructs part of being human? I'm confused. I, I, I would agree, if I'm understanding right, I would say, yeah, social constructs are a part of being a social species. It's part of being a human. We have all kinds of social constructs, but if that social construct becomes damaging... You know, this is, and this is kind of what I was saying with how we see people in categories. Like, when it becomes damaging, it's not necessarily the problem that it's natural or not natural. It's like, well, this is not good for us. So let's, uh, let's rein this in. (laughs) All right, let me hop on the, um, the hashtag for a few. Oh, shit, we have 359 questions. (laughs) Ah! Wow, you guys have really good questions. Um... Here's a good one. So Tevin asks, what role do trans men play in radical feminism? Uh, I think trans men can play any role they want in radical feminism because they're female and so we welcome them as allies into the feminist movement. I mean, I think that trans men, feminism is for trans men also because these are people who are born female. Even if they transition, like, you know, completely move through the world as male? Well, so there's a couple of, I mean, part of the issue why, I really hate this excluded term, but why trans men might feel left out of feminism is that we have a different ideology than these people do. So I don't believe that, I don't believe that gender identity is a real thing. I don't think there's such a thing as gender identity, so I don't agree that it's possible to be a man on the inside. So that's probably why people might feel excluded from feminism is because we see the world and we see gender in very different ways. Gen- Wait, so the identity thing, I just want to comment on that. Like, gender identity is not a real thing, but isn't just identity, it, isn't identity a real thing? Do you think nobody identifies as things? Like they don't people see themselves in these things all the time, but we aren't obligated to validate those identities necessarily. And when it okay. comes to gender identity, that idea specifically, I'm not opposed to people identifying with certain categories. Um, okay. You know, like, but you know, I I guess I identify as a socialist. <laughs> okay. But that's that's based on like an ideology. That's right. not. You know. Anyway, I'm getting on track here. But like the the issue with gender identity specifically is again with how feminists understand gender. So I don't believe that gender is on the inside. I think that's a really sexist idea. I think that gets into that lady brain and stuff. Like if gender right. is if, if I'm a woman because my gender identity is uh, attached to femininity, then I think that's a really horrible, regressive, sexist idea. Like I wasn't born feminine. I wasn't born subordinate. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I'm actually going to be talking to Contra about this quite a bit. Um, this idea of what uh, the parameters of gender identity. I think, you know, I disagree with you in that gender identity isn't real. I think it, it, it's pretty self-evidently real. Like, it's just how people make sense of their gender. That's their gender identity. But this, I think what you're describing is something slightly different. Um, but that, that's tangential to the point. <laughs> Thanks for your question, Tevin. Um, we got about five more minutes here before we switch gears and explore the opposite side of this uh, feminist debate. Uh, Bisexual Buffy on Twitter says, gender as a class really breaks down under scrutiny. It's been a much more symbiotic relationship. Women both valued and devalued. Um, that's, an, that's an interesting comment. I think, Meg, do you feel like you've kind of shared your bit on yeah, I think that I sentiment. Myself. Yeah, okay. Um, is a woman more of a feminist by rejecting gender roles? Can you be critical that certain roles exist while still adhering to them? I mean, everybody adheres to gender roles to a certain extent, I think. Right. 
I think um, it would be very difficult in this, not my choice necessarily. Okay. It would be very difficult in this culture to be socialized in this culture that we live in and not, be affected. Um, you know, perform gender roles without even knowing it. Like, I know, I guarantee that I have body language that would be coded as feminine, and I'm not yeah. even aware of it. Right. You know, um, like the way we sit. Like, you know, we talk about that. It, it's it's kind of silly and obviously like it's jokey in some ways man spreading right <laughs> yeah right like the way that men take up space on the bus <sighs> man spreading men take up space in different ways than men do not all men not all women but you know what i mean like the way we sit we'll sit cross-legged we'll try to take right. a small amount of space like this like hair thing so is know, that bad know? then i think it's what peppermint's asking like is it bad that we you know have some gender I think roles? it's bad that men take up so much space on the bus yeah but, <laughs> <laughs> That's the real fight against the patriarchy. I actually think the, the man spreading stuff is so hilarious because it's like, really, this is what we're fighting about right now? Like, like I'm with you that like the violent stuff is so the issue. Stupid. I mean, I get so annoyed about men in space. Like, I get angry when I'm walking down the street with my boyfriend because he takes up so much fucking space. And I'm like, do you, what do you mean? Like, do you have to walk it's like walking around like this? Like, when we're in the, in the truck together, I'm like, oh, okay, can I show you your armrest? Like, I don't know. I think it's like you know, it is about socialization. It's about men not thinking about how much taking up and women being know. more aware about the space they're taking up. I don't know. I mean, this is my opinion. Okay, yeah, I mean, I think it's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> this is my opinion. It's actually one hundred percent correct. So moving yeah, on. So. No, I, I interpret it slightly differently. Like I don't think the man spreading thing is a problem personally. Like I I think that women kind of do the same stuff in different forms, but that's a different conversation. Let's do about two more questions from Twitter here. Garbage Robot wants to know if you really think that rationality is not a female trait. No, no, it's not that I don't think it's a female trait. I think that as far as gender roles go, masculinity, rash, rationality is coded as a masculine trait and irrationality has been coded as a feminine trait. So, you know, in the 1800s, women weren't allowed to participate in politics and public life and have the vote because they were considered to be irrational and emotional and kind of crazy. Right. And men were the rational ones, so they were the ones who were tasked with, you know, making laws and having important discussions about important matters. Right. Does that make sense? Does that help at all? Uh, Most females are, are I mean, I, I, uh, I agree with you, yeah. So no hopefully, hopefully garbage, garbage robot, that makes a little bit sense, a little bit more sense. Um, Okay, so there are a few people who have some stuff for me, um, which I want to be able to answer um, from the radical feminist side. A little, a little criticism of me, which is I, I will address here shortly. Um, Megan, this has been a great talk. I really, yeah, really I enjoyed you. talking to you, um, and I would, I would love to keep this conversation going because I do think that we all have shared goals here, um, and we can all bring a lot to this this movement and these issues uh do you have any final closing thoughts you want to share or are you you good no i'm good yeah i enjoyed this conversation and i appreciate you hosting it and i know that you caught like a whole a lot of shit for <laughs> you're just talking about it which yeah. is significant like even don't if you me. don't even have like an opinion like you start you have some opinions obviously but like just asking the question just asking yeah. these questions is like you've been like barred from liberal feminism. I I have been kicked out of the feminist club. Really, yeah. I really have. My card was revoked. I can't get into the clubs so anymore. Conversation, <laughs> like, I think that's I think that's revealing. I think it is their too. Their politics and their ideology. I know. I, I, I we got to talk about that. I'm still processing it. I feel like at one point I'll be ready to have this conversation, but I'm still like trying to figure out all these things. So. I appreciate uh, your solidarity and I appreciate you being here. Yeah, Until next so time. Yeah, you can.